the dock. It's gonna be a hell of a long walk back to Hill Valley from here. Still the safest plan. After all, we can't risk sending you back into a populated area or to a spot that's geographically unknown. You don't want to crash into some tree that once existed in the past. You don't want to crash into some tree that once existed in the past. This region owes its name to the park's main attraction, a rare and natural phenomenon that has transformed wood into stone. These rocks are reminiscent of fallen trees. In fact, they are ancient formations of stone. But how could wood possibly be turned into stone? Long ago, this landscape was covered by a dense forest. Mighty rivers cut across the terrain. Water caused by heavy flooding in the deep quagmire of the swamp and having, in effect, been hermetically sealed, the trees were subsequently covered by layers of sediment. Thus, their further decomposition was halted, and the petrification process began. sand and volcanic ash settled above the trees that gradually absorbed minerals from the surrounding moisture. Thus, hundreds of fossil trunks developed that today are scattered across the prairie. The large percentage of silicon in the groundwater delayed the natural decaying process and at the same time created the amazing transformation of the trees. Today, the petrified forests, formerly tall conifers, are the most common examples of this stone world of plants that date back to prehistory. colors of the pure quartz and various other varieties of these stone trees are quite remarkable and are in stark contrast to the bright blue of the mostly cloudless sky. There are hundreds of thousands of fossilized wood specimens that lie in close proximity with one another. In this isolated area that is known as the Badlands, there is little vegetation and it is therefore quite unusual to encounter any form of wildlife. Illuminated by the sunlight, the petrified tree trunks and their glossy red appearance have always been the subject of fantasy and imagination.
tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit, that the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth.